you need to stop entertaining distractions if you desire a committed relationship. Grand rising, beautiful kings and queens, and welcome to the Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse podcast. You need to stop entertaining distractions if you want to commit it, if you desire a committed relationship. What do I mean by that? I'm learning and growing just as much as anyone on this journey, right? But I've become more dedicated and committed to my goals and the desires that I wish to manifest in my life. I speak so much about creating a stable foundation of friendship with a potential mate because I've learned the lessons, these lessons in my life for myself. You know, it took me getting three tires slashed by another woman that a man was on again and off again with for a whole year for me to realize I was entertaining a distraction when I desired a committed relationship. And the thing is, is that we discussed this from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like he told me he wanted a companionship. That's what I wanted too, you know, a companionship. And that is the base of, that is the base of a relationship. But then I gave in to the sexual advances and going forward, I know now when a man starts, and, and I've done this, I've practiced this a couple of times since. When a man starts going down that route of sexual, you know, saying that he's sexually attracted to me, I'm letting him know like, hey, like I'm only interested in a friendship. And if you're, if you're trying to, like, I'm not interested in, in having sex with anyone right now, right? Like I've been asking it now for um, eight months, I think it is. It'll be nine months next month in April. Um, and I plan on staying that way, you know, um, until I'm in a relationship that's going somewhere, you know, I'm not dating anymore just to, you know, just to, to date, you know, I'm dating with a purpose. Like I'm dating with the purpose of having someone that I can share my life with on a daily basis, you know, and, and I get it. We're both going to have our own lives, you know, and, and this is what this, what I feel that this singleness is teaching me is how to still thrive and have my own life, even while in a relationship, because I lost myself in a relationship for 20 years. And that was because I didn't really truly know who I was. So now the next man that comes into my life, it's like, look, this is who I am. Either you take it or leave it. And that's as simple as that, because my life is not changing anytime soon. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy inspiring others. This is something that I have always wanted to do. And I'm not stopping anytime soon. And I'm not interested in other men. There are men, plenty of men in my inbox. There are plenty of men who want to be in my inbox. But, you know, I had to turn off my messages because it's like, I, I'm not here for that. I'm not here to, to gain a relationship out of this. I'm here to inspire other people, you know, and... If you want to connect on a personal level, if you want to get to know me on a personal level, then it will have to be outside of social media. Simple as that. Simple as that. You can't just come, right. You, I, I, okay, yeah, I get it. People meet people on social media all the time. I get it. I get it. I do. But I'm not on there like that. I'm not on there to to hold, you know, like whole conversations in my inbox. I'm not on there. Like, I don't, I don't live on social media. That's not my life. I live outside of social media, you know? So, and I, I get a lot of people don't understand that, you know? So the only thing that I got to offer you right now is support. <laughs> That's it. You know, I'll jump on every now and again and like your posts and comment on your posts, but I'm not on there like that, even on TikTok, even though that's the majority of my, my following, I'm still not on TikTok like that. I get on, I post, I scroll, I comment, I like people's stuff and I get off. Same thing I do with Facebook and Instagram. And, and like I said before, actually, it's going to be different with Instagram and Facebook because I'm only going to be on there two days a week. 
Sundays and Thursdays, I mean, Sundays and Wednesdays when I do my IG lives. And then those are the days that I'll actually be on there. So then I can go scroll and like, I try to get on, jump on now, you know, just for a minute and like and scroll and comment on the accounts that I follow and that follow me too. Um, but, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I, it's, it's springtime. It's about to be summer. I'm not going to be in here on social media. Like, I'm going to be out at the pool. Like, me and my daughter are about to go on vacation this week for, for a week. You know, so, like, I'm, I'm doing other stuff. You know, I'm sitting out on my patio enjoying my music, enjoying nature, enjoying myself. You know, so like, no, my whole life is not wrapped up in social media and maybe I won't ever have a relationship because it seems like that's, that's what most people want nowadays, you know, is to get to know people on social media instead of in real life. And I'm, I'm a real life connection person. Like I want to connect with you in, you know, like us joining our time together, you know, like. I just feel like on social social media, you get caught up, you know, you get stuck. And it's like, I don't want to be there stuck. So that's, that's a distraction to what I'm trying to accomplish when instead of me scrolling on Facebook, I could be writing for my podcast or I could be writing for the books, you know, adding my, my poem, my, my letters and stuff to the books to get my book finished. You know, like there's so many other things that I can do other than being on social media, you know? So, um, you know, and when I had that relationship in 2019, you know, I really wasn't taking my own advice, you know, and, and, and not entertaining distractions and, and really getting to know a person, you know, and, and because of this last relationship, I'm like, you know what, I am tired. So I am going to get to know somebody. I am simple as that, you know, um, and, and if they don't want to get to know me, then, then it's okay because I like being by myself anyway. So even if it doesn't turn into anything more, even if they're like, no, I don't, I don't want to go this long without sex or whatever, then okay. Okay. Because I know that the man for me is going to be okay with waiting because he's been waiting himself. You know, he's had that time himself out of relationships, you know, not being with anybody else, learning to love himself unconditionally, that he knows that, you know, it's okay to wait. It's okay to wait and take your time and get to know the other person. You know, you're not in a rush. What you got to rush for? If you meet your person and you die tomorrow, at least you can say that I met my person, right? At least you can say that, like, I know for myself and I can't speak for everyone else that when I was more concerned about what I didn't have, my life was a miserable fucking mess. It was a miserable fucking mess. You know, I wasn't appreciating everything that I did have. I was so focused on having something else in my life. You know? Focused on having what I wanted. And instead of just letting my soul guide me, letting my soul show me, hey, this is what's best for you, you know? And when he, and, we, and when we both were discussing, hey, we want companionship, because that was my thing, you know, I had, I read him like this quote that I had made before I had seen him, right? Because he's like, did you see me coming? And I'm like, no, like I did me some, some, some card draws or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And, um, but I really wasn't focused on anybody coming into my life, you know? So, but you know, the moment he started talking about sex, that was my cue to extinguish that conversation and continue building the friendship, you know, because I'm not on sex. Like if, if, if you're, if that is your lure, then I know that that's, that's really all that you are wanting from my energy. Like you genuinely don't want to build that friendship and get to know me and know my energy because you know, some days, some days you're going to get this energy and some days you might not, you know, I do have my days too. I have my days when memories come creeping up and I may shed a tear, 
you know? I didn't stick to my guns and ask the necessary questions like, are you dating anyone else? Does anyone else think that, you're your, that they're your girlfriend? Are you bisexual? Are you actively working to heal your childhood trauma so you don't project them onto me? You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm so thankful for my lessons. For the lessons that I've learned on this journey. It builds more self-control. It builds more awareness of myself. It builds more confidence. It builds more courage to say no. <laughs> No, this is what I want. And if you can't, can't get with that, then I'll remain alone. Because I'm not sharing myself sexually with anybody else. Because that right there has been the problem in my relationships. Because I didn't get to know that person. And we had this sexual encounter. And then all of a sudden, all these triggers come up of rejection and pain and heartache and all this other stuff. And then I'm ready to take that out on that person. But when you sit down and, and genuinely get to know somebody and, hey, you know, this, is, this has been my life. You know, like I have, I've only had, you know, really can say three relationships in my life. Everything else was really a fuck buddy, a casual relationship. You know, and the one committed relationship that I allowed myself to be in, I lost myself in. I turned myself inside out to be what somebody else wanted me to be instead of being myself. I was not living in the authentic light of my soul. I was loving God based upon what others told me to do and how I saw others loving God. And that kept me in a spiral of hate and jealousy and anger and bitterness and resentment and competition and lack. You know, now I'm confident now going forward that I, I'm capable of getting to know someone deeply in a friendship, on a friendship level before we mutually agree to commit to a relationship with one another, you know? I know how to go on vacation with a man without needing to share a room with him and still have a good time and enjoy each other's company. I know how to enjoy the company of a man in the privacy of my home or in his home without the need to have sex with him. No matter how physically attracted I am to him because I want something deeper and stable this time around. You know, learning to love myself unconditionally taught me that sex is nothing more, that physical connection that we have with another person is nothing more than the icing on the cake of a loving, playful, passionate, adventurous, compassionate, connected, interdependent, happy, healthy, holistic relationship with another person. It's just the icing. It's just like, can you imagine it? Can you imagine it? Like, oh my goodness, I got this good ass cake, right? Like my favorite is chocolate cake. I got this good ass cake. And then they put, and I'm not really an icing fan, right? But let them put some buttercream icing on it or some whipped icing, what? So that's sex with your best friend, with your teammate. With someone you can just enjoy life with and then you add that icing. Imagine that, imagine that, you know? And that's what I want. 
And I'm not settling for anything less than that anymore. So, you know, I'm willing to wait and, and let it build up. Ooh, let it build up. Ooh, let, ooh, let it build up. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, but you know, like just learning how to build that foundation of trust and genuine connection and love as friends, you know? You know, it's stronger, you know, and then and then having sex with that person, like you trust that person. So even if if after y'all have sex, something is triggered, y'all can talk about it. Y'all can discuss it as friends, you know, because there will there will still be triggers. I'm, I'm confident of that, you know, because I have not had that sexual interaction, it always brings up triggers. It always does. Every time I have sex with somebody, it always ends up bringing up a trigger, which I know needs to be healed. But when you have that in a trusting and loving relationship, you two can talk about it. So I can say, you know what? Our interaction just triggered this in me, you know, or something like that, instead of running off and hiding and dealing it, dealing with it with yourself. Or you can just let that person know, look, I was triggered by our interaction. So I need a little bit of time to like process these emotions and these feelings. You could talk to them, you know, like this is the whole basis of having that spiritual connection with someone else and learning to be their friend first, you know, cause then you can be vulnerable in your feelings. You know, you can be transparent, you know, and, um, it's, it's, it's learning to love a person on a deeper level, you know, and when these triggers come up, you don't sabotage the relationship because of you are pushing them away because these triggers came up because you all are able to discuss them. Or, you know, if, if something came up at, you know, as a man, if something came up and you don't feel good about it, you know, she's there to rub your head or lay, you know, you can lay in her lap or whatever, you know, like when you have that trust built, it's a solid foundation, you know, it's, it's, it's something great. So, you know, and it could be all in my imagination, but I'm going to let my imagination run with that because that's what I'm envisioning for my life. And I'm all about envisioning what you want for your life, the type of relationship you want for your life, the type of connection that you want with another person. And, and for so many years, I was focused on one particular person, you know, and, and, and really not accepting what came into my life. And going forward, I'm just going to accept what comes into my life, you know, because I don't want to, I don't want to, and I'm, but at the same token, me saying that, I tell people from the beginning, you know, even if I do enjoy their energy, hey, look, all I'm looking for right now is to build a platonic relation, friend, excuse me, friendship. And I know that that scares a lot of men because they don't, they know that building a friendship is investing their heart. And see, most men, if they just having sex with you, they don't have to invest their heart, right? They don't have to invest their heart. They don't have to invest their time. But I'm looking for someone this time, or I'm not even looking. I'm only receiving into my life this time around the man that is ready to invest his heart, you know? Because, hey, you know what? If you ever had your heart broken, it's scary. It is. It's a scary thing to do, right? To invest your heart and come out with nothing. But you learned, right? You learned. You learned how to invest. So then that way, when it comes around again, you are ready to invest, right? Right. So, um, you know, and when we, when we don't take the time to get to know the other person, typically, sometimes people lie at the beginning, you know, especially if they're just going in it for sex, they'll, they'll, they'll lie at the beginning or they don't really want to reveal their truth because, you know, they're afraid because of their past that people will, you know, betray them or automatically judge them, you know, be because they never got to know them on a deeper level. And that's why it's so important to get to know people on a de deeper level. 
and discuss your past transgressions. You know, I get it. People are afraid, but that's why, that's why I get to do what I do here. I'm going to tell you about my stories. I'm going to tell you about my past transgressions here, you know? So you can either accept me as I am or not, because I have, you know, I've betrayed people. I've hurt people. I'm, I'm not perfect, but going forward in my life, I'm making sure that I am aware of my energy, the energy that I'm giving out because I no longer desire to hurt another individual. I don't, you know? You know, we've all been betrayed. We've all been lied to. We've all been cheated on, you know? People have abused us. No, but I still believe that there are people in this world who are learning and growing the same way that I am, right? They're tired of the lies. They're tired of the games. And they are actively working on healing the wounds of that little boy and little girl inside of them so that they can walk in their divine light and their true identity as a king and queen. You know, kings and queens, they take accountability for their actions. And they actively acquire the knowledge necessary to help them change the actions so, they can, so that they can prevent it from happening again in the future. Even if it's not with that same person, even if it's with a different person. You know, I acknowledge my part in all of the relationships because I saw the signs, but I chose to ignore them. And in this last relationship, when I, when I spoke up about it and it changed for a minute, then he displayed the same patterns. It was my choice whether I stayed or not. You know, and, and a part of me still, I guess, was thinking that, oh, you can, you can love this person to, to be their best self. But if a person does not genuinely want to be their best selves, then it don't matter how much you love them. It doesn't matter at all. Your love will never be enough for them because they are not ready to own up to their own bullshit. And you can't, you can't make them be accountable. You can hold them accountable for their actions towards you, but you can't make them accountable for their own bullshit. They have to become accountable for that, you know? And so after that last incident, I, I just knew, I was like, you know what? It's time to let them go. And um, I didn't, I can't, I did, I wasn't gonna change my business number because that was the only number that he had. Um, but I ended up changing my new self, my cell phone number. So, but I, but I did though. And I know that he probably does have my old, my new number because the last day that I spent, because I did, I, I changed my number and it was only, he only had my business number. Right. And so when the whole little incident happened and the girl, cause I had spent the night over his house and the girl cut my tires, he I, I gave him my phone because I don't have nothing to hide, right? I don't, you want my cell phone? Here's my cell phone. So, and I and I'm thinking now he probably went in and got my got my new number. You know what I'm saying? But I don't answer because I received a text message a couple of weeks ago that said um, that was like yo, and that's how he usually you know text like yo, Yanni, what's up or something like that. I ain't answer. I said, well, actually, I did. I said you got. I think you got the wrong number. You know. You know. Um, because like I've said before, like if you're willing to harm somebody in a way that you know would be more detrimental, you know, like you're trying to bring people down. I don't want that kind of energy around me because even with the heartbreak that I experienced with the man in 2015, I, that changed my life. That changed the direction of my life. And when the man in 2019 did what he did last year, it, 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 wakes, it opens my eyes to see that people who are willing to try and knock down 
the foundation that you have built just so you can depend on them are not people who love you. Because people who love you are not going to try to tear down anything that you have built. They're going to grab their bricks. They're going to grab their, their tools. And they're going to help you to build. And so because I have not encountered that yet, I'll continue to stay single. Because even a man talking about money all the time is not a man that I want to be with because that's his only focus. That's his only priority. And I get it. Money is great. It is. It's a great tool. It's a great resource. But our number one purpose here in this life is love and service. And if you are not genuinely serving from a place of love and money is your only goal, then from my personal experience, I know that you will sell your soul for money. You will throw people under the bus. You will steal from people. You will lie and cheat on people. All for the dollar. And because I've had that experience, I don't want those type of people in my life. Because that, those actions are what make money the root of all evil. When people will lie, kill, steal, cheat, and try to destroy you for a dollar bill. That's when you know they love money more than they love people. So, you know, um, and I tell people all the time, I'm single, but I'm not available. But that doesn't mean that I'm not getting to know people on a friendship level, you know? Because I tell these men up front, I'm not available. I'm, I'm doing me this year. I'm, I'm spending my time with me this year. If you want to, you know, if you are still interested in pursuing something more, I'm only get interested in getting to know people on a, a, a deeper level. I'm only interested in people who are willing to invest their time and getting to know me. And they can choose whether they wanna participate or not. And I'm not available really. I mean, like, like I said, we about to go on vacation. So we gonna be at the parks. So I'm not gonna have my phone. You know, the only reason why I have my phone is to take pictures. <laughs> That's the only reason why I have my phone on me. We're not, I don't answer phone calls. I text you when I get back, you know, like I, I'm busy. I'm busy enjoying my life. No, I, I may hop on Facebook and, and comment on my favorite poet's post, you know, or go hop on IG and like, like a couple of my friends stuff and comment, maybe throw up a TikTok video, but I'm about to go enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> I'm enjoying my life and I'm, I don't want any distractions. And I don't want any weights. So, you know, and I'm no longer caring about a relationship and it feels good to be in this, this space because I haven't always been here. And I think a lot of the times I found myself in these dead end situations and hurtful situations was because I was trying to make something, something more than what the other person wanted. And then, you know, learning now, if a person tells you that they're not ready to go deep, all right, we could be friends. Yeah, that is no shade to me. That's not, that's not a reflection on me. Just believe them and stop trying to convince them that, that they are ready. <laughs> if a person says that they don't see the relationship going any further, believe them and walk away. And this is why it's so important not to have sex because See, when you, when you have sex with that person, it changes. It changes the dynamic of the relationship. But when you've never had sex with that person, you could be like, all right, hell, we can be friends. Sex changes things. It really and truly does, you know? And because you didn't build the trust with that person, it's kind of hard to trust them again. 
you know? Right. And if a and if a person says that they only want to be friends and just be their friend. Stop trying to have ulterior motives and trying to make them see your worth. If they don't see your worth in the beginning, baby, they never going to see it. <laughs> that's not the one that's going to see your worth and value you. You got to learn from your lessons. That's why I'm here showing y'all, teaching y'all. Like, you can learn. Sometimes it, it takes it takes a couple of tries, but yeah, you get you get tired. Like, mm -mm. okay, I'm tired of going through that. So, if you enjoy learning about this topic today, I have a free private Facebook community where I teach others practical ways to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse. All you have to do is subscribe to the monthly newsletter, and in the thank you uh, email, you will receive. Uh, your discount code, and that is for uh, your 10% discount for being a subscriber. You get a discount code so that you can get the uh, workbook and the, the self-love affirmation for free. And it uh, gives you the access to the Facebook group, which you, you need to go ahead and join the Facebook group community. Um, if you have already started loving yourself, you're in a place of loving yourself, but you feel stuck in one area. And, and you're ready to dive deeper in a supportive members only community, then you can register today at suzysuttles.com. I want to see you win in life and in love this year. And both groups are going simultaneously. Um, and they start uh, April 12th. They start, they both start on April 12th. So, um, but I'll do my live and the monthly group uh, one, uh, once a month, the third Friday of every month. And then in the paid community, I will be doing lives twice a month in there, live trainings twice a month, and that'll be on the second and fourth Friday of every month. So um, a Mother's Touch Inc. is a community organization. That's my baby. And that assists men and women financially who are leaving domestic violence relationships and having a hard time financially. It also provides loving support and mentoring for any person who desires to live a healthy, happy, and holistic life beyond a mental barrier. Um, the Loving Yourself Unconditionally uh, Beyond Abuse Facebook community and A Mother's Touch Inc. was created based on my desire to be the community and organization that I needed when I found myself struggling financially and leaving an unhealthy and abusive relationship. The organization is a proud collaborator with community organizations whose mission is assisting families and co-parents with becoming the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of themselves. Because see, what I learned is that healthy adults raise healthy children. They raise happy, uh, holistic, healthy children. And those children have a healthy love of themselves and others. If you are someone you know is in need of financial assistance, or if you are interested in donating to our mission, please visit www.amotherstouchinc.org to fill out the financial assistance form or to make a donation. All donations are greatly appreciated and accepted. I thank you all for joining me today. This is the end of the program. If you are listening on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Breaker, uh, Radio Nation, or uh, go ahead and share. Please share with other people who you think may get something from this. If you are watching on YouTube, I want you to like comment. Let me know what you think about the discussion today. Share, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications because a new video comes out every single day. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for me to love on the, the universe and send you all out with a prayer of love. So dear universe, I love you. I love you so much. You are my world, my life, my everything. You are divine God, universal life force, source, mother earth, mother nature, energy, life force, prana, chi. You are the air that I breathe, the song that I sing, my melody, my harmony. You're always enough, always enough for me. You are always enough. And people can't understand when I say, that I truly have everything that I need. Even without someone laying in my bed,
even without a masculine version of me in the flesh to share my life with. I have everything that I need. And that's how I know I'm enough because I'm enough for myself. And that's truly what it's all about. It's, it's about us becoming aware. Not only do we have everything that we need that, that we're always enough and that someone's rejection of us is not an indication of our worth or our deservability. It just means that they weren't ready to receive our energy properly. And I tell you, I think you would prefer to have people that they're not to say that they're not ready to receive you and all that you bring to the table and all of your energy than to lead you on and make you believe that they want something more with you. So I thank you. I thank you for your love. I, I thank you for being my strength, my way maker, my protector, my provider, my security, my safety. I thank you for being my home. I thank you for being my peace, my sanctuary, my tranquility, my serenity. I thank you for being the love of my life. That I surrender my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul only to you. Because you are the one who who takes care of me. And until that type of energy arrives in my presence, then I'll continue doing this. And that doesn't change my love for you because I'm still gonna love you as deeply even with someone in my life because you are truly my foundation, my anchor. You are the solid ground, the solid rock on which I stand. I'm so thankful for your love and the light of your high vibrational energy and that it continues to help us to rise above the energies of indifference and hate. It continues to touch our hearts so we can break down walls and barriers so that we can live free from hurt, pain, and anxiety. When we surrender our hearts to that pain and know that that pain was just a, a place. It's not our destination. It's just a place on our journey, a chapter in our journey. I'm so thankful for healing, letting go and moving forward with my life. And to cherish the good memories and make more good memories. I love you. I'm so thankful, so grateful and so abundantly blessed to, to serve in this capacity. It is truly a privilege and an honor. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor to be abundantly blessed so much that I want to bless other people with the love that I have on the inside of me, the love that you gave me. And it's a privilege. I thank you. I'm grateful for another day. Let's rock it out. Let's get her done. And so be it. And so it is. Amen and amen and amen. I thank y'all so very much for being here. I want you to go out, have an awesome, amazing and beautiful day today from my heart to yours as always. Namaste.